My name is Katie and I'm on the product marketing team. So I work closely with our customers to get your feedback on the product and understand how you're using it. And then work closely with our product and engineering teams to make sure that we're building the right features for all of our customers. I'm here with Suman. Suman, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Simon. Um, I work with House. I've been working with House for the past five years. Uh, I work specifically with QuickBooks integration. So I'm one of the accounting integration experts at House. Um, and I'm super excited to take you along the journey of integrating and going over any questions you guys had. Okay, perfect. Um, so Sumam will jump in and do a demo. If you have any questions as she's going through, feel free to put them into the Q&A tab and we'll do our best to answer them. We will be sharing this recording afterwards, so don't worry, don't feel like you need to take notes. And we'll also be sharing a few additional resources. Our group today is a mix of designers and builders. So there are a few nuances that may differ between the two. So Sumam will do her best to cover that, but again, we'll also be sending out some other resources that you can follow up with. So with that, Sumam, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Katie. All right. So I'm starting off with my design account. Uh, and like Katie mentioned, there's a slight difference between design and build. Uh, so we're going to cover that as well. So to start off, uh, before I kind of deep dive into how House integrates with QuickBooks, uh, it is a one-way sync. And what I mean by that is documents sync from House to QuickBooks and not the other way around. So if you're doing anything in QuickBooks, that's not going to push over to House. So it is a one-way sync and it only integrates with QuickBooks online. Um, so it's a cloud-based integration. Um, and if you have QuickBooks Online Plus, that's when purchase orders will sync over to QuickBooks. Uh, we just had a very recent amazing update, uh, even for Build or GC Pros, uh, POs are now integrating or syncing over to QuickBooks. Uh, so that's a pretty new feature that we just released. Uh, so to start off, if you look on your left tab under Settings, under Integrations, you can click into QuickBooks. And this is how your screen is going to look. There are a few steps you want to cover over in QuickBooks. So one is setting up your tax agency. Um, and if you click into this link, it's going to take you directly to that page in QuickBooks. So you don't have to go looking for it in QuickBooks. And then you just want to set up your sales tax agency. Um, this is automated sales tax. So if you're not already on automated sales tax, you do need to switch over to automated. And what automated means is that in QuickBooks, it's a new feature. Uh, it automatically calculates sales tax based on your company's zip code. So based on the shipping zip code, so wherever you're selling to, uh, it will calculate the sales tax based on that zip code. And for the integration to work, you need to be on automated sales tax. Uh, the second is to turn off automations. So QuickBooks has like a few automation settings, uh, which is to pre-fill form with uh, previous credits, uh, automatically apply credits. What it does is that if all if any of these are on, it will automatically start applying credits in QuickBooks, which could create a mess in your QuickBooks. So you want to make sure to turn these uh, options off. And the next is if you want to have your purchase orders sync over and you are on QuickBooks Online Plus version or any tier higher than that, you would just turn on your POs. Um, and the last step is to just connect. So you just go ahead and click connect to QuickBooks. So we're just going to do a live connect. Hit next and connect. It was just as simple and now you are successfully connected.
Uh, the what you're seeing right now is called the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is basically your entire window to QuickBooks. So this shows what documents have synced over to QuickBooks, what has not synced over to QuickBooks. It's a great feature. Accountants love this feature. Uh, a lot of accountant accounting firms use this uh, dashboard bi-weekly end of the month uh, just to check what do documents have synced, what needs to sync. As you can see, you can basically filter through projects uh, by status. So you can say uh, what's ready to sync, what's sync in progress. You can go over all these different statuses and see what documents have synced over. And I will circle back to the dashboard once we're, we cover the settings and what documents sync over from house to QuickBooks. Uh, any questions so far? No, nope, no questions yet. Awesome. All right. Okay. So going back into settings. So this is for design. The build looks a little different and I will try to uh, connect my build account um, in a little bit to see it's just to show the difference. Uh, but this is for designers. So some of the options are similar for build, but uh, it's a uh, the, it isn't as detailed mapping, and we might have that option soon for a build as well. So to start off, the first is sync documents starting from. Uh, the day you connect is the day it shows up, but you could absolutely predate your sync. So you could say, I want the documents or I want my sync to start from March 1st. And you can dictate when you want your sync to start from. Uh, the next is your payment settings. So when you receive a payment against a proposal or a retainer, that money basically will sync over to QuickBooks as you have two options and you can select between the two. One is sales receipt and the second is unapplied payments. So what typically happens is the payment that you receive against a proposal or retainer isn't income yet, right? So you're basically taking the money from your client before the job is done right? Uh, it is considered liability at that point. Uh, so the one way to map it is you can map it as sales receipt. So in-house, let's say you have a proposal, you collected a deposit against the proposal, or you had you sent out a retainer, it took money up front against the retainer. Uh, if you have your payment type selected as sales receipt, that will then sync over to QuickBooks uh, as a document called sales receipt. Uh, what that does is that it hits the liability account in QuickBooks. And then as you apply the payment towards invoices in house and that syncs over, this is going to move from liability to income. Uh, the only nuance and uh, the reason I just wanted to bring it up because uh, some accountants prefer the other method uh, is that if you're selecting sales receipt is it creates a negative line item on the invoice. So that's how it reduces it from liability to income. It doesn't apply on the document as a payment. Uh, it comes over as a negative line item on the invoice. So um, that's just how it, it, that's the only way it can be applied against the invoice. Uh, and the second is unapplied payments. If you select this method, uh, what happens is that, again, when you receive a payment against a proposal or a retainer, that will sync over to QuickBooks under the client profile, under the customer in QuickBooks. Um, and it's going to sit there as an unapplied payment. So you'll see a payment not applied towards any document. And if you were to run your profit and loss, uh, cash basis, it's going to say unapplied cash income. So just basically saying this has not been applied to any invoice or any document. Uh, and as that payment is applied towards an invoice or as you convert a paid proposal to an invoice, that payment will, will be applied towards the invoice and it's going to move from unapplied income to applied income. Um, so that's just a different way of uh, having your retain and proposal payments sync over to QuickBooks. Uh, and it's you could just select between one or the other. Uh, any questions uh, for this? We're good? Awesome. OK. Um, 
And as we move down the account setting, uh, this is your deposit account. So any, this is the account you receive your payment in. Uh, you want to map it to your checking account. And this is a window to your QuickBooks. So any account you make uh, in your QuickBooks under your chart of accounts, you should be able to see it in your dropdown. Uh, so you could go ahead and map it to um, your checking account. And now if this is mapped to a liability account, you want to leave it to the house pro retainer deposit or any other liability account because the sales receipt does hit your liability account. Uh, but if you have it mapped to unapplied payments, you don't have to worry about the retainer deposit account because it's just it doesn't hit the liability account regardless. Uh, the next is your transaction fee account. If you are receiving payments online, uh, using house, uh, there is a transaction fee which you can pass on to your client. Uh, let's say you're passing it on to your client. So it was a hundred dollar invoice and the clients go in and pay that invoice. And let's say there was um, the pay, the invoice, the amount they paid was 105, including the transaction fee. Uh, what happens in QuickBooks is that this $5 hits the house per transaction fee income account. And then obviously that $5 is expensed out. So it hits the house per transaction fee expense account. So basically it's money in, money out, and all of that is handled in QuickBooks. So it is a wash, but if you do see it in your profit and loss, uh, this, this is what the account does. It's just taking the money that's the transaction fee that the client has paid. And then it also shows that expense out. Uh, your bill pay account is on your purchase order. You are able to create a bill and bill payment in QuickBooks. And when you mark the bill payment, you can dictate if it was like a check, which should hit your checking account. And then you can also dictate if it was a credit card charge. Um, and you just would need to map it to your credit card account in QuickBooks. So if you have Chase, American Express, you would just map it to that. Uh, obviously, physically, the payment doesn't happen, but it just indicates where the payment came from. Um, any questions uh, so far? Yes. Um, one question from David. He said, as a home builder, he doesn't charge for sales tax to the end customer. Is there a way to selectively disregard the auto sales tax? Uh, you mean the automated sales tax? So. Yeah. You would still need to set up your automated sales tax, but what's going to happen is if you don't on an invoice indicate uh, that anything is taxable, nothing is going to filter to that account. So if you have nothing, so if on an invoice you don't mark anything as taxable, nothing will sink into your sales tax liability account. So you won't show any taxes at the end of the month. The only reason you need to set up automated sales tax is for the integration to work. So regardless of if you charge sales tax or not, you do want to set it up. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and that's awesome. it for now. Awesome. All right. The next is your tax mapping. So this is, uh, on a purchase order, you can mark items as taxable. And this is only if you have paid tax to your vendor uh, that you want to mark on the purchase order as an item as taxable. And then in QuickBooks, it's going to filter to this house pro sales tax paid to vendor account, which is a cost of goods sold account. This is only applicable for uh, if you get a deduction for any taxes you pay to the vendor. Uh, that's the only reason you would want to tra track it. If you have like a resale certificate and you don't necessarily pay sales tax to your vendor, uh, you don't need to mark any item on your purchase order as taxable. Um, again, your payable account is just your house pro. You could just map it to, it's just your accounts payable account. You could just leave it as is, or you should see an accounts payable uh, that you can map it to. Um, and you also have an option if you wanted uh, to select purchase orders to not, not sync over to QuickBooks, you could select this option and that way none of your purchase orders will sync over from house to QuickBooks. Uh, once you're done with your mapping, you just want to check mark, I hide I acknowledge that saving these changes will impact my future syncs only and save that. 
So this is your general settings. Any questions before I move, move on to product mapping? Nope, no questions for now. Awesome, all righty. So we're gonna start off with product mapping. Uh, so product mapping is, there is a difference with the way the uh, mapping works within QuickBooks. So in QuickBooks, when you add a product into QuickBooks, you immediately have to assign it to an income and expense account. Uh, but obviously, if you're a designer and you're adding multiple products, that becomes a little difficult. So to make that easier for designers, uh, what you basically what this does is called custom mapping and it's called category-based mapping. Uh, and what that means is that you can map a specific product, a specific category from house to a specific income and expense account in QuickBooks. So let's say you have a category called furniture, right? And then you want to map it to a furniture income. So you would create a furniture income in your QuickBooks, or uh, in this instance, I want to map it to my sale of product income. And then I want to map it to a cost of goods sold account. Uh, what happens is as and when now you add your product, you would just select the category to be furniture in house, right? And because in the back end you've mapped furniture to this income and this expense account, any product that you've selected the category to be furniture, uh, when it's on an invoice and it syncs over to QuickBooks, it's going to hit the sale of product income. And then if this same product is on a purchase order and when you create a bill it's going to hit the cost of goods sold account so this kind of makes it a lot easier to do specific mapping without having to map each and every product in your house to an income and expense account um, and also this option of specific mapping is only available for designers uh, it's not available for gc yet uh, the whole reason being that for most gc pros uh, there is no need for a very specific mapping as long as all of the products are going into a product income and all of the services are going to a specific service income um, there isn't an like we haven't seen uh, much of a need for a specific mapping option uh, but that's also in the in the works for the future. So hopefully in the future, you will have an option for, if you are a GC Pro to have a very specific mapping. But right now for designers, you have this option available. So you can continue adding custom mapping. So you could keep adding a different category and mapping it to different income and expense account. What it does, the only reason to do this is that if you were to run your profit and loss it's a little bit more detailed so you see your furniture income versus your fabric um, but uh, it doesn't affect anything else it's just for more detailed reporting um, and this is your default mapping so any category that's not mapped or any product that does not have a category assigned to it it will fall into your default mapping so this you could leave it to like house pro products or you could again change this to sale of product income or product sales uh, completely up to you how you want to map that or you could leave it to the default income and expense account uh, again it's good to have a specific mapping, but we usually recommend not trying to have like a hundred custom mapping because that makes it very confusing eventually in your profit and loss. Uh, so this is your product mapping. Any questions uh, regarding product mapping? Nope, no questions. All right, great. Uh, I am going to go on to service mapping, very similar to product mapping, but this is for services. So let's say you have, uh, this is your shipping. So you can mapping to like a shipping income and a shipping uh, cost of services. It doesn't look like I have a shipping right now, but you could just basically map it to a shipping income and a shipping uh, expense account. Um, again, this is all of your services, so you can create additional categories uh, and make sure that your products are assigned to the right category. And then you could just map a, a category as a whole to an income account. And you just want to make sure that once you're mapped, that service is assigned to the right category. 
And once you once you complete your mapping, you just have to make sure that you acknowledge that these changes will only impact future things. So you can always come here and update your mapping. The only thing to keep in mind is that it only updates future uh, document sync and it doesn't do an historic sync. So this is just if you do any custom mapping, it's only for the future. Uh, and this is your service mapping and your connection uh, is just, it shows that you, which QuickBooks account you're connected with. And if you ever wanted to disconnect a uh, house to QuickBooks, this is where you would do that. Uh, and lastly, I just want to touch over a vendor mapping. If you don't uh, have, if you've not been using QuickBooks for a long time, I wouldn't worry about vendor mapping. This is only specific to if you have been using QuickBooks and you have multiple vendors in your QuickBooks, you can dictate saying that, uh, let's say you created a vendor in-house called Anthropology. You could just say, this is the account in QuickBooks I want it to go to. So it's basically mapping the vendor from house to a specific vendor in QuickBooks. So I could say, I want this vendor to sync to this vendor, right? So you can specify which vendor the that in-house will sync to which vendor in QuickBooks. Again, this is optional. You just, if you ever wanted to do it, you'd have this option under vendor mapping. Um, any questions so far? Yes, one question from Larry. Is it possible to map to specific projects? No, there isn't a way to map it to specific projects. The way this sync works is that uh, when you create a, a project in house, and let's say that when that syncs over to QuickBooks, that actually syncs over as a customer in QuickBooks and not as a project. So, um, so let's say that you have John Smith's Beach House in um, House, and then the client name is John Smith. When that syncs over from House to QuickBooks, the main customer is going to be called John Smith, and then the sub customer is going to be called john smith's beach house so it, you'll have multiple sub customers under the main client name um, so you can run like profitability based on customer not project hope this helps okay thank you and uh, that's it for now all right okay so this is your mapping. Um, I did want to show you how it looks for products and services because I was going over category-based mapping. So if you look at your uh, products, this is where you have the category. So you want to make sure that if you're doing specific mapping, you are assigning your product to a category. So if this is a rug, like if you've done specific mapping, you just want to make sure that it is going into the right category. So when this product is used on an invoice, it does go into the specific mapping. Um, so this is where you can see what category your product is mapped to. Uh, now we're just going to go over documents that sync over from house to QuickBooks. So your invoices, your proposals, your retainer payments, and purchase orders sync from house to QuickBooks. Uh, so we'll just start off with a proposal. A proposal will sync from house to QuickBooks when it's either approved. So when you approve a proposal, it'll sync over from house to QuickBooks. Uh, the reason it says sync not available is because of the date. As you can see that it's from 2021. Uh, and then um, we just started the sync now. So that's why it shows that. Let me go ahead and just create a proposal real quick. That way we can Okay, so I'm just going to add in. Okay, and perfect. All right, so as you can see, this is not ready for sync yet. So a document will sync when you log a payment. Automatically, the document will sync if you log a payment. If this proposal is approved, or if you send this proposal to your client, all these trees are three um, 
points are called automatic triggers. So it'll trigger the document to sync over. So let's go ahead and approve this. So you can see that now it says the sync is complete and it shows that little green icon saying the sync is complete. You can always click into this and view in QuickBooks. It's a great feature. So you don't have to go looking in QuickBooks. And as you can see, it brought, it, brought me to the document in QuickBooks and uh, it has everything broken down here with if the item is taxable and the amount. And for invoices, so let's go ahead and create an invoice. An invoice will sync similarly when it's sent, when a payment is logged, um, or if you were to issue the invoice, these three are triggers and you can always sync a draft document. So what that means is that I haven't done anything. This is in draft mode. I haven't sent it. I haven't applied a payment, but I still want to sync it to QuickBooks. You have the option to sync a draft version. So I just want to go ahead and sync the draft version and it will show while the sync is in progress and now it shows sync complete. So again, similar, you can go ahead and view in QuickBooks. Any questions with uh, regarding this? There is one question from Jacqueline. If the same item has one product name in QuickBooks but a slightly different name in house, will it come over as a completely different item? Yes, so if you had, let's say, um, uh, a blue blue sofa, right? And it's named as little differently in house. It's called blue dash sofa, right? It will sync over to QuickBooks as a different product because the house uh, house in QuickBooks wouldn't know that it's the same product. So typically, yes, it will create a brand new product. I wouldn't worry too much about the products per se because you can have thousands of products in your QuickBooks library it doesn't affect anything. Um, as long as it's mapped to the right income account, when you do run your profit and loss, you will see it mapped to the right income account. Okay, great. Uh, that's it for now. Great. And the next is purchase orders. So um, purchase orders will again sync over when you send it or when you create a bill and pill payment from the PO. So let's go ahead and, okay, and let me just add some prices. Okay, 500, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and log a payment. So you would want to mark this as bill, so it creates the bill in QuickBooks. And this is where you would indicate if it's a check or credit card. Um, so I'm gonna say it's a credit card. And then it gives you an option to create a bill and bill payment in QuickBooks or create bill only. So creating bill only will just basically create a bill in QuickBooks and you would have to manually create the bill payment. And then when you select bill and bill payment, it creates both the bill and bill payment in your QuickBooks. So let's go ahead and create the bill and bill payment. Great. And as you can see, it says sync in progress. And, and then you also, the, the main reason why you want to select bill only is that let's say that you have multiple, um, you know, bills for the same vendor and you cut out a check. So let's say that you have like five different purchase orders for CB2, but you just send out one check to the vendor, then it's easier to just create bill only and send that over to QuickBooks. And then in QuickBooks, basically, when you select those five bills, you can manually say that you created a bill payment against five bills. Uh, so this shows sync complete. So we are going to go into QuickBooks. And So this is what we just created. So we created a purchase order for 500 and then the bill and bill payment is now created 
for um, the same purchase order. So this is the bill payment as well. So this is the option that's just opened up for GC. So now if you're a GC pro, you should have your purchase order sync over from house to QuickBooks. Um, this just got available two weeks ago. So this is great. Um, and this uh, basically just, we just kind of go over, um, yes. So this is basically the purchase order, the invoices, the estimates that sync over from house to QuickBooks. The last thing is that retainer payments also sync over from house to QuickBooks. So if you were to create a retainer, um, only the retainer payment will sync over to QuickBooks, not the retainer as a document, because retainer, there is no document in QuickBooks for retainer. This is just for house. So any payment that you log against the retainer, that will sync over to QuickBooks, and it depends on what payment type you selected in your settings. So if you've selected sales receipt, it will sync over to QuickBooks as a sales receipt. Um, or if you've se selected unapplied payment, it will sync over to QuickBooks as an unapplied pay payment. So this is basically just like the uh, overview of the integration. Uh, we can kind of leave the floor open for any questions. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see any that have come in recently. Do you want to quickly show a build account? Yeah, so that was just going to do that. So just give me one second while I log into my build account, but feel free to chat in any questions. Happy to answer those while I log in. Uh, okay, great. One question here from Jay. If I'm set up with housing QuickBook online, but my account did uses software, um, QuickBooks, will they be able to access his QuickBooks online? So I think it's yes. just the online versus desktop, right? Yeah, so your your um, accountant should still be able to use QuickBooks as usual. Great. Nice. Um, we had one more question come in sure. from, from Nicole. Um, she said, we have project expenses like purchase of tools, equipment, or waste receipts. Is that different than POs or should you log them as POs? Uh, so if it's overheads, that's not specific to the project. You don't want to mark it as a PO. So POs is only project-specific expenses. Uh, but if you have like overhead expenses, uh, if that's what you're referring to, you would want to um, enter that directly in QuickBooks. So if you have like overhead expenses, right? Like rent or something that's an overhead. But if it is a project-specific expense, you want to log that as the purchase order. Okay, and any other questions? I don't see this question here, but I know I've gotten it before. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a world in which you can get rid of QuickBooks and do everything in House Pro? Or I guess, how do the two, how do they work together? Got it. Um, so House is more a project management software. We do have amazing um, reporting and things like that. But QuickBooks obviously is an accounting software. Uh, the whole reason we say to integrate with QuickBooks is most accountants like to work with QuickBooks uh, uh, when it comes to reporting and it's more detailed and things like if it's an expense that doesn't specifically pertain to a project, you need to enter that somewhere. Um, or if you have like an owner's draw, payroll, things like that, which is not specific to projects. Um, and you want that to be entered somewhere, right? So when integrating house to QuickBooks, it makes life a lot easier um, as a designer or GC pro, because you're working in the software that's specific for you. And then that's integrating uh, to a tool that's very specific to accountants. And also if you wanted to do, run specific reporting, um, QuickBooks has the option to do that, right? So that's the whole um, point of having both the, the integration. And that way, there's no duplicate entries. There's no time wasted entering something in house and then going into QuickBooks and then re entering that because that can take a long time. Uh, just kind of, you know, entering things and then just. Uh, having to re-enter that in QuickBooks um, and also saves time for like, saves time. There's no 
need to duplicate documents. It's done automatically for you. Um, and then there's less room for error because if I was manually going into QuickBooks and creating the document, there is a high chance I could miss a number, um, not put in that info correctly. Uh, so there's less room for error and everything is basically starting off from house. So you have one streamlined process. So if anything needs to be changed, you go into house, update that, and that will also update in QuickBooks. This is my GC account. And I am just going to go ahead and connect. I don't recommend having one QuickBooks and connecting, but this is just my demo. So I'm going to go in. Great. So this is for GC Pros. As you can see, the mapping isn't as detailed as uh, designers, uh, but it's there isn't hasn't been a need as such. But we are going to open up a more detailed mapping for our GC Pros as well. So as you can see, the sync date, you can again dictate your sync documents from. So you can say, I want this to start from May 1st. Um, and the payment settings is similar uh, where you can basically toggle between sales receipt and unapplied. Again, a quick, um, I would say a reminder is it's good to kind of stick to one payment type. So if you're decided on unapplied, just kind of stick to that. You can always toggle between the two. You could always six months and say, I prefer a sales receipt, but there is a little bit of an overlap. So if documents, if payments have synced over as unapplied, you would need to go delete like any residual payments left that's not been applied to a document. So then it can sync over to the new payment type. Uh, so it's just kind of good to kind of you know, explain it to all your accountants that these, this is what each of it does and then make a decision based off of that. Uh, your deposit account, again, you just have to select between the account where you receive your payments. Um, and then your account mapping is product income. So you could say, I want this to be a sale of product income. And then uh, this is any income from labor. So any service income, uh, you could leave it to the default or you could um, map it to like a service income and then go ahead and save it. Uh, your dashboard is very similar to design, um, but the dashboards are similar. It basically, if you look at the dashboard, it says, um, as you can see, it has different statuses, so it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to go in and check, has this document synced, has this not synced? You would just go into your dashboard and say, okay, this has not synced over because of the date. Um, as you can see, um, it also will give you a little bit of detail saying, once sent, paid, or issued, this invoice will sync over. Most of my documents, the sync is not available just because of my sync date. It's just uh, because of that. Um, it's not available yet. And you also have an option if you hover to the right, the three dots, and you could basically disable sync. So if there's a specific document, you're like, I really don't want to push this over to QuickBooks. I've created this in QuickBooks already. You can go ahead and disable sync. Uh, you can also show related items. So if it's all connected document, right? So if you created a purchase order from an invoice, all of these are connected documents. So you can always see what of my connected documents has synced, what has not synced, um, and it kind of shows all of that. So the dashboard is great. Definitely, um, you know, dive into that. Feel free to, you know, come back with any questions even after the the training if you had any questions. And definitely, we're happy to assist. Uh, but dashboard is definitely a great feature, and then. For GC2, you have your connection where you disconnect. It shows you what you're connected to um, and things like that. So any questions for us? Great. Um, one more question. At what point, basically, is it too late to edit something in-house? Like once things sync, sync over, if you then edit it in-house, will that still update in QuickBooks? Uh, yes. So once a document is sent over to QuickBooks, you can still make updates and it will basically, um, let me, it will give you an option at the top that will say sync the latest version of this document. So let's say you created an invoice, sync the invoice from house to QuickBooks, and then now you're like, hey, um, I want to just, you know, add in shipping. You can go in, add shipping, and then you would just at that point 
sync the latest version of that document over to QuickBooks. It'll give you that little update and then that'll push over. The only time it's considered too late is if you issue an invoice, because issuing an invoice basically locks the document from any future changes. So once you issue an invoice, you can no longer make any changes to the document in-house. And that means that it will not also update in QuickBooks. Got it, okay. Um, and then a question from David, do you have to use payments through House Pro or can you use another payment processor? Uh, when you say payment processor, are you seeing the QuickBooks payment option? Uh, yeah, potentially QuickBooks or another way of having clients pay you. Of course, yes. So if you are having a different way to do it, so if you're, let's say that if you're using QuickBooks, I'm just gonna uh, focus on the QuickBooks one and we'll cover the other. So, if you are using QuickBooks, the way it works is that you create the document in house that pushes over to QuickBooks. Then you need to send that invoice from QuickBooks over to your client for them to make payment. And then that payment then gets logged onto the document in your QuickBooks, right? But because it's a one way sync, um, that payment is now not updating in house, right? So you would need to then in QuickBooks, delete the payment against the document, go into house, log the payment again, and then, then the payment will sync over to QuickBooks. So there is no harm in using a different payment method. The only thing is that if it's QuickBooks, you would need to delete the payment and then, um, you know, re-enter that in house. But let's say you're using wire transfer like your client just is transferring the money over to you um or you have like you know you're using apple pay to receive the payment all you would do is make sure to log the payment like go into the invoice in um house and make sure that you are saying that this invoice has been paid or market as paid so then that payment then sinks over to quickbooks and there's a payment logged so let's say it's a wire transfer it's not necessarily applied against the invoice you just received your money in the bank so you want to show that it was for this document and it's applied towards the the invoice okay great i think that covers it um any last questions feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise you can reach out to us. And Suman, did you mention the QuickBooks support that's available? Yeah, so I was just coming to that. So that we do, you do have the option for QuickBooks support. It's $45 a month and you get unlimited support for the month. Um, and the second option is you do also, if you're just connecting your house to QuickBooks, you have an option for a complimentary one month free support. So that's calls, chats, um, you, we can schedule calls. So definitely feel free to leverage um, either or. So if you've already been connected house to QuickBooks um, and you wanted support and the support is specific to any kind of training, we don't work with your QuickBooks. That would be more specific to your accountant, uh, but we provide more of like training support if you had any questions regarding the integration. Um, and if you ever encounter any kind of bug where you feel like documents are not syncing for no fault, uh, we do assist with any kind of technical issues, um, regardless of if you have support or you do not have support. Um, but uh, feel free to leverage either or like the, you have also the monthly packet. So if you needed, your accountant needed some training, some additional help, uh, happy to provide that. Uh, but also if you were just integrating house to QuickBooks, uh, you do have that one month support. Amazing, thank you. Thank you everyone so much for joining. We hope this was useful. We'll be sharing this recording um, probably later today or tomorrow. So you can always go through if you wanna follow up on our demos. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Iman. Thank you. Bye.